Have you seen this symbol before? If you go to some Babel building or if you have relatives that do and you've been around or you know things in the occult or whatever else, I want to zoom in here. I'm going to show it here on screen. Uh, this is in a cult building, a Lutheran cult building, Lutheran in other words. And uh, as you can see here, you can't really get too good of a, a shot of this thing. You can see it uh, right there. And, um, and this is a very interesting symbol for a number of reasons. And uh, because you can't see it, I thought I would draw out a, my own little rendition of it. Because I zoomed in as much as I could and couldn't find this thing online. But I think that there's some very deep stuff going on here. So I'll have my lovely assistant come in here with the uh, drawing that I did. And go ahead and show it there. All right. Now, if you notice, if you know anything about the occult, this is the symbol here basically that was used. You have a triangle here with a circle around each one of the points. Now, they would say, well, this is to represent the Godhead, you know, the Trinity. Uh, well, the problem with that is, if you read your Bible, Acts chapter 17, Paul dealing with the pagan people there. Acts chapter 17 and verse 29, it says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the God has, is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. So we're not supposed to make images of the Godhead. So if this thing is depicting the Godhead, you're in violation of Scripture. But understand the occult here. If you take these three circles and you intertwine them, you get a trichatra. Right, the symbol of witchcraft, the witchcraft trinity. Uh, bring it down just a little bit. And in the center, you have IHS. Now they say it's a Latin meaning, you know, following Jesus or something essentially like that, but uh, which is nonsense. If you really know what's going on there, it's Isis, Horus, and Set. I've heard some, some people say Seb as well, but Isis, Horus, Set there. Uh, in Egyptian mythology, it goes back to Semiramis, Nimrod, and Tammuz in the Babylonian tradition there. Uh, it has nothing to do with God. All right, this is a very occult symbol. But notice, too, that there are three butterflies in between there. There's a red one, a purple one, and a green one. And again, it represents the, the banner that was in this occult building there, um, which I'll tell you a little bit more. Actually, she'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But butterflies, what is a butterfly? Well, in the occult world, it's a symbol of reincarnation. It starts out as a, as a caterpillar. It's transformed into a beautiful butterfly. It's a symbol of reincarnation or transformation. Um, also in mind control, the monarch project. Um, you start out with a caterpillar, a regular person, and you transform them into a beautiful butterfly, a mind-controlled slave. So there's obviously some major occult stuff going on here. My question is to anybody out there, do you know the origin of this thing? Do you know any other details about this? Obviously very occult symbol. All right. And of course, the seal of the Jesuit order, I'll put the seal up here. The seal of the Je Jesuit order is IHS. That means Jesuit. I'm a signature no. of the Superior General of the, Je of the Jesuit order. That's his signature logo. Mm -hmm. But... Um, What's the significance of your life and this particular building? Where do I start? Well, we're just going to just, you know, we're not going to do a big history thing of it here, but uh, what's your connection to the building? Well, I was baptized as an infant in this satanic occult building that this logo has been found in with the Lord's help. And um, <clears throat> I was... Uh, I don't know when I was exactly baptized into witchcraft, but that's what it was. Infant baptism is witchcraft. Then uh, later on in is. my junior high years, I was confirmed into the Catholic, <coughs> excuse me, Lutheran, Lutheran faith. And, uh, and then upon high school graduation, you know, I was, uh, you know, still forced to go attend services with my parents. My mother was always... Yeah. forcing me into being an acolyte when I said I don't want to. She's like, oh, come on, you'll be good at it. Just, sure, just, 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 sure. But what I'm saying you know. is this building in particular is the one you were raised in. Yes. Yes. Infant baptized into witchcraft, confirmed in, uh, had a, you know, graduation ceremony at the cult building and everything. And I'll put not, that down. Not really a ceremony, but a celebration, I should say. Sure. And uh, it's been my lifelong um 
mind control based cult building. Mm -hmm. And um, the hireling that's currently there wasn't the one that was there when you were growing up, but right. what's the guy's name? We're going to put a picture up of him here, too. Well, he came after I graduated from high school, so uh, I don't remember the exact year off the top of my head, but uh, the first hireling's name was Alan Helwege, H-E-L-L-W-E-G-E. -E. The current papist hireling, uh, his name is Mr. Kenneth J. And I took this from the website, so I'm not, you know, just mm -hmm. forgetting things. Yeah. Last name, Davidson. D-A-V-I-D-S-O-N. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, here's Concordia his... Concordia University graduate. Yeah, here's his picture. Okay, interesting little thing he's doing with his hands there. Now, that is an occult symbol. Okay, first of all, you say, well, no, no, it's just it just means peace. You go like that, it means peace. Uh, well, if you understand the peace symbol, the peace symbol is a cross, an upside-down cross, with the two arms broken down like that. Okay, it is a satanic symbol. All right, it's also a rune, by the way. The I forget what, if it's it's not T was. I forget which rune it is, but it has two points down and, or I should say, three points down and one up like that. Okay, so that is a inside a circle. It's a satanic symbol, the peace thing. So even if he's trying to say peace or something, it's uh, satanic. But within the Illuminati, there you have the Law of Fives, Roman, Roman numeral five. And also within the occult, you have the two horns of Satan up and the Trinity, the three down. You know, it, this is also another way to do it. And I'm doing that just for illustration purposes. Somebody's probably going to you know, take a snippet of that or something. But whatever, that's your problem. You know, I'm not an occultist. You know, I'm just showing you what the, the symbol is. But it's interesting that he would do that with both hands. Interesting, too, because Jack Hiles did the same thing. Hmm. And so did hmm. Ernie Land, very blatantly, in his uh Yeah. You know, well, he was doing the, the the actual Il Cornato thingy, whatever, with his yeah. hands, the whatever. So, uh, very interesting. And it just so happens, just by sheer coincidence, that Atlantic, Iowa is not very far from Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska, that uh, had the Franklin cover-up years ago. Uh, John DeCamp, where all these Republican, with the, within the Reagan-Bush administration, these guys were uh, basically raping small children. You say, well, that sounds like something a liberal Democrat would come out with. Uh, yeah, except for the fact that John DeCamp was a Republican congressman. And ironically, so, I can relate to a lot of the stuff that's written in there. I don't understand why yet. The Lord hasn't revealed it to me yet, but uh, in his timing, we'll bring it out. Yep. And uh, just, just a really... Uh, very well documented book but very sick book I mean it's just really sick to read of some of the stuff that, that went on there let me get a picture here real quickly um, you know understand that, that within the occult within the, the uh, Jesuit system you basically have uh, a lot of perversion that goes on as a means of control um, just show you this picture here really quickly uh, if you saw the de uh, not debate <laughs> The interview I did with Eric Phelps, I, ex I asked him about Exarbon. And right here is a picture from John DeCamp's, DeCamp's book of some men from Exarbon. Okay, dressed up like women. All right. Um, some sick individuals here. This was in uh, 1967. Hmm. So this is before a lot of the uh, sodomy uh, was really, you know, sodomy and transvestite transgender <laughs> you know whatever <laughs> satanic perverts Didn't that um predate you know the, the uh overthrowing of the misog miscegenation laws that was the same year loving versus virginia was 1967 i'm not sure the exact but i'm uh, saying this might have predated the that law being i don't passed. know okay. i don't know but the the it, they don't really give the uh month or whatever here but you know the same year same year that the anti-miscegenation laws were lifted here in America with Loving versus Virginia, these perverts are out there dressed like women, and uh, you know they're they're good they're good community leaders, of course, very good community leaders, and there's plenty of them that go to this Babel building where my wife was raised, you know, but uh, that's the symbol. We're curious about that. If anybody has any other information about this thing, I mean, the Lord's showing us stuff all the time, revealing things, you know, to us, and and uh, this is definitely an occult symbol. Uh, there's no question about that. And for it to be in a Lutheran church, 
uh, there's definitely Jesuit involvement. I mean, the IHS, and the IHS there is, is all through that cult building. You can look up the pictures of it. What's, what's the website for that bow building? www.zionzionatlantic.com. Yeah, and you can go all to the... One word, Zion Atlantic. And you can look at the photo gallery. You'll see it all throughout the uh, sanctuary, <laughs> if you want to call it that. IHS here, IHS there, you know, the gold cross up front, and IHS in the middle and, and everything. Jesuit involvement in a Lutheran church. And the Catholic uh, um, alpha intertwined with the, the I forget what the symbol omega. is called. Alpha and omega on, on each side of this one weird, um, what's the thing with the... X and the P together. Yeah, the the Greek word PX there. It's it's relative to Greek words meaning Christ. Yeah. But you know, and and these guys, these priests, a lot of times will wear the P and the X right in the middle of their their little robes that they wear and stuff like this. You know, a bunch of satanic nonsense. But we, you know, wanted to do this thing just to get this symbol out there and get it known to people. Here you go. You can hold it again. You do a good job. We just wanted to get this thing out there to get it known that they're putting their symbols out and occult symbols in Babel buildings because Babel buildings are pagan temples. That's what they are. And I've seen IHS in Baptist churches. All right. Um, that's a symbol. Elite on a Baptist church. Yeah. One right down the road, actually. More on that coming out later. But, um, you know, it's, it's getting bad. You know, these Babel buildings. Uh, actually, it's, it's getting bad for them, it's getting good for us as Bible-believing Christians because everything that we've said that people say, oh, you're crazy, you're kooky, you're weird, uh, it's just coming right out in the open now. So it makes our job easier, convincing people of the wickedness and the evil. And if you are going to some place where they're running these kind of symbols, having these things out there and things, get out. Don't go and meet with the pastor and sit down and have a nice little talk over coffee. Get away from it run away as quickly as you can. It's Jesuits that are running the thing. All right. And you say, well, you know, but my pastor, he went to a school that that was not a Jesuit school. He didn't go to Loyola or Georgetown or Creighton or, or any of these others. Creighton University, by the way, is right out there in that same area. Uh, works hand in hand with the uh, hospital where my mother-in-law, her mother works. She's and worked directly with them. Yeah. So it's, it's, but you say, my pastor didn't go to a Jesuit university. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. You see, the Jesuit schools, Georgetown, Loyola, Gonzaga, Creighton, you know, Fordham, all these schools, they're openly Jesuit. But the fact is, they control the other ones. If they don't have the King James Bible as their final authority, if they're using the new versions, the new versions are put out by Jesuits. Okay, they tie right back to the Vatican. Or if they and, use multiple versions, you know, uh, like perversions yeah. plus the, the King James at the same time as, you know, comparison for so-called, uh, uh, how do they say that? Yeah, better readings and stuff yeah. like that. The point is, the Nestle's text is one of the men that sits on the board of, of uh, editors and things there is uh, Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini. He's a Jesuit cardinal. He's dead and in hell right now. Uh, knows better, and I'm sure if he could see what we're saying, he's probably cheering us on and saying, please tell people. I was deceived my whole life. You know, warn them about stuff like this. But uh, the point is, if they're going through some kind of a seminary that's not King James Bible believing, they're coming through a Jesuit school. Might not be Jesuit named, but it still is teaching the, the foundational principles of the Jesuit system. So, run away from these Bible buildings. If you know anything about this symbol, uh, any more detail about it, what it might be called or whatever else, put it down in the comments section. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.